As I've shown in my earlier videos in the early Proto-Germanic series, Proto-Germanic, as we find it in dictionaries and so on, represents the language spoken about 2,000 years ago, meaning the last common ancestor to all living Germanic languages. But there is a very long development in between that language stage and Proto-Indo-European, and much happened, in particular in grammar and phonology, in that period. Just like any other language, Proto-Germanic had plenty of unproductive and fossilized and frozen grammatical forms and vocabulary in its structure. And this video will go through some of these features. Gothic is the oldest Germanic language we have recorded in lengthier texts, already around 300 AD. And it has many archaisms that are lost in later languages, such as a inflected passive and dual forms for verbs. Only remnants of these verb forms remain in later Germanic languages, like for example the verb to be called or to call upon in Old Norse and Old English. Otherwise, these verb forms are completely lost, and the forms with S in North Germanic are innovations unrelated to these ancient endings. Old High German was the morphologically most conservative West Germanic language, and it had many archaisms in verb forms that are completely lost in, for example, Old English and Old Saxon. This is seen in, for example, second and third class weak verbs, along with a handful of strong verbs that took the first person singular ending M from the Proto Indo European athematic forms. This ending became leveled out elsewhere and only remains, for example, in the English word form I am, but in early Old High German and partially in Middle High German, this ending was actually found in several verbs. According to German linguist Wolfram Euler, there are some remnants of Indo European aorist in Germanic. He points to some irregular forms in Old High German and Old English that seem to derive from the Indo European aorist. However, these forms are not a full grammatical category in its own right, but are more like fossilized forms that function like irregular indicative or imperative forms. But they still point to aorist still being around in the early development of Germanic and leaving traces in the daughter languages. The Indo-European endstems, later known as weak nouns in Germanic, originally had a very complex system of shifting accent and sometimes also ablaut within their paradigms. While these endstems grew in number and became very common in Germanic, the system of inflection within these forms was largely leveled out and completely lost in the medieval languages. One example of remnants of these more complex alternations would be the word for ox, showing umlaut reflexes of the various endings that were greatly leveled out in most descendant languages. There are also some remnants of ablaut seen in, for example, related roots of semantically similar words that used to be inflectional forms of the same word. According to Schuss Kronen, there are actually remnants of these alternations within Germanic that point to there being a complex system. In Proto-Germanic, long consonants developed according to complex rules based on Proto-Indo-European stress placement and so on. And these alterations led to a great number of word roots in Germanic that can show up both with a short and long consonant. These alternations have been explored in depth by Schuss Kronen, and he suggests that endstems once had a complex alteration between consonant shifts and ablaut within the paradigms. If we apply these consonant assimilations, as Schuss Kronen reconstructs, to endstem paradigms, many alterations between consonants develop. And Schuss Kronen reconstructs early Proto Germanic with alterations between consonants here that were later split into separate words, but some traces remain, like the word Herr, that is the form Hase in German, showing an alternation between R and S. And he also reconstructs Ablaut in the paradigms, as shown in the word for wooden beam in Germanic earlier. But since most of these consonant and vowel alterations became so irregular, speakers split them up into separate words. For example, the roots Klimp, Klamp, Klump were at first different inflections of an endstem paradigm, but became split into separate words in the daughter languages. While ablative and locative are not found in Germanic nouns as distinct cases, they still left clear traces in adverbs in Germanic languages, and some dative forms continue original locative endings. For example, these ablative and locative forms can be seen in directional and place adverbs in Germanic, 
many of which still remain in Germanic languages today. Also, a common Germanic adverb ending is often reconstructed as an old ablative. The Proto-Indo-European first-person pronoun shows up either with one or two syllables in daughter languages, and this is actually seen within Germanic. For example, both the forms ek and eka are actually attested in runic inscriptions. And the long form eka is ancestral to Swedish jag and Danish-Norwegian jai, meaning that this variation was still productive within Germanic. Werner's law is very well known in verbs in Germanic and comparatives, but there are also traces of Werner's law operating in noun morphology, not only end stems but also neuter nouns. For example, there are many word pairs in Germanic that show up with and without a voiced consonant, in particular neuter nouns that seem to point to an ending accent in the plural or collective form, showing that at some point Werner alterations were also found in nouns similar to verbs. All of these examples point to a much more conservative Germanic verb system and nouns that used to have alterations in ablaut and accent similar to verbs. But many of these changes are very hard to date since Germanic developed over such a long time period, but they are nonetheless interesting holdovers from older stages of Germanic. <laughs>